Hey, Retcon Raider here. Today I thought we'd take another look at All Walls Must Fall, a tech noir tactics game by In Between Games. Now, I talked about this game a bit when it first hit early access on Steam earlier this year, but there have been two big updates since then, so I figured it was about time I gave it another look. So, what's new in All Walls Must Fall? Well, let's start off with the basic stuff. Alpha 3 launched back towards the end of September, and it brought a lot of small but notable additions to the game. This included better camera functionality, including more cinematic camera angles during the post-firefight instant replays, as well as other things like more comprehensive tutorials, basic training scenarios, rebindable keyboard controls, and other general quality-of-life improvements. One of the more notable things in the Alpha 3 update was the addition of UI markers, which update as you accomplish various goals during your missions. This really helps when it comes to efficiently navigating the map, marking the location of things like entrances and exits, as well as the location of the car you need to get to at the end of each mission. It also marks the location of your current goals, such as specific NPCs that you need to speak with or containers that you need to loot but only after you've managed to establish a line of sight to them. The UI updates were nice, but in my opinion the best new feature added by the Alpha 3 update was the addition of a manual combat button. In earlier versions of the Alpha, the player could only shoot at enemies once the enemies had initiated combat, severely limiting how the player could approach potentially deadly combat scenarios. With the addition of the new manual combat button, the player can instead draw their weapon whenever they want, allowing them to get the jump on hostiles before the player has been spotted, or maybe just letting the player gun down a pesky bouncer who won't let them through the front door. But, as nice as those new additions might be, they pale in comparison with the new content added by the brand new Alpha 4 update. This update, dubbed the RPG Elements Update, adds a fairly decent amount of new gameplay content to All Walls Must Fall. First, the Alpha 4 update significantly improves the turn-based combat experience. Enemies come in larger numbers, with a wider variety of weaponry and a better tactical AI. As of the latest update, enemies will often hang back at choke points or duck for cover during prolonged gunfights, all while blasting away with pistols, shotguns, submachine guns, or even assault rifles, which can quickly tear apart the player's surroundings. But it's also worth noting that the recent changes also provide the player with better rewards for engaging in these bigger, harder battles. As of the Alpha 4 update, the game now employs a combo system, rewarding the player with larger amounts of the time resource for defeating larger numbers of enemies in a single combat encounter. This encourages the player to not only take on bigger fights, but to also make heavier use of their special time-traveling abilities during combat, because the combo rewards will theoretically replenish all of the time units they spent once the battle is complete. It's an interesting risk-versus-reward system intended to nudge the player towards more exciting, action-heavy playstyles. The player also gains the benefits of a new upgrade system, in earlier versions of the Alpha, the player could unlock new weapons and time travel abilities, but that was about it. But now they can further enhance their unlocked weapons and abilities through the use of a basic linear upgrade system. Weapons will become faster and deadlier as they're upgraded, with larger ammunition capacities that make it a bit easier to handle those longer gunfights. Upgrades will also make the player's time traveling abilities cheaper to use, again actively encouraging the player to make heavier use of those abilities both in and out of combat. It is a fairly basic upgrade system, but it already succeeds in adding some additional depth to the game. And then, of course, there are the new Augments, each of which grants the player a certain type of passive bonus. There's a decent array of Augments to choose from, and each Augment can be upgraded to further enhance the benefits it offers. It's up to the player to decide which augments to prioritize, largely depending on their individual preferred playstyle. For example, more aggressive players might want to focus on augments like body armor and explosive rounds, which will allow them to survive more damage while also doling out more damage in return. 
players who rely heavily on their time-traveling abilities during combat would instead want to focus on augments like Flux Capacitor and Displacement Dodge, which allows them to store a larger number of time units and then use those time units to literally dodge bullets during combat. Players who don't mind getting into a fight but want to keep it manageable may instead enjoy augments like the Silencer, which reduces the noise radius of the player's weapons, meaning that less enemies will show up when the player takes that first shot. Augments like the Tesla Rounds will also make it easier to control crowds of enemies, enhancing the duration of the player's special stun attacks. Of course, there are also a handful of basic augments intended to help players who prefer a more discreet approach. Augments like Neural Matrix and Pheromones allow the player to more efficiently bypass locked doors, or to more efficiently talk their way past NPCs. In fact, as of this update, it's now theoretically possible to do pacifist runs, completing every mission currently in the game without killing a single enemy. Aside from the enhanced enemies, the new combat tweaks, and the new augments and upgrade system, the developers have also used the Alpha 4 update to introduce both achievements and Steam trading cards to the game, if you care about that sort of thing. But for the people who do enjoy collecting achievements, there are now 135 different achievements to unlock, requiring the player to make use of every augment, upgrade, and strategy if they ever want to reach 100% game completion. Overall, the latest alpha updates have added a decent amount of general upgrades and new content for the player to have fun with. Personally, I've already found the upgraded combat system to be a lot more engaging, and I've had a blast getting into absurdly large gunfights, sometimes against 50 or more enemies at a time. It's a lot of fun using your abilities during these massive battles, lunging past speeding bullets with displacement dodge, manipulating time so you can unload your entire magazine into your enemies in the blink of an eye, and then crashing through a wall with your cyber fist to make a quick escape, only to rebuild the wall behind you with a quick bit of selective temporal rewinding. I will admit, outside of combat, the game does still feel a bit too basic. For example, the dialogue system is still far too predictable. Once you know how to talk your way past certain types of NPCs, you'll always know how to talk your way past them in future playthroughs. But it's important to remember that this is a fairly low-budget game, and it's still in the alpha stage of development. The newest updates have definitely started moving things in the right direction, and who knows what else the developers will end up adding to the game as development moves forward. If this game has taught me anything, it's that you can never be entirely sure what the future has in store. This is Retcon Raider. Signing off. Thanks for listening. Oh, and remember, although I do love talking about All Walls Must Fall, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website or the store page on Steam. Links are in the description.